Thank you, Black Supremacy. Black Supremacy. I would like to thank you all for being here today. Once again, I am King Noble Master, Black God and Guru, uh, known to many as the Sex God. I have come to you today with a divine message. I gotta be really, I gotta go in deep this time, because I try not to be redundant, and, and I'm not gonna speak if I don't have something to say, or something to address that is very pertinent for our community and for us to awaken as a people. So I want to start, first of all, by thanking people with their support. I want to thank people who have been donating resources to help build our Black Supremacy Command Center and help us to manifest the workstation and the equipment we need to continue to bang on this devil and to take the work that we are doing to the next level. So I want to thank everybody who is donating, who is not afraid to step out of fear, lack, doubt, and limitation and give their resources to help a cause that they know is real and genuine and that they can see the work that we're doing on YouTube and on Facebook and they see the diligent work that the Black Supremacy Vanguard is doing 24 hours a day over the Internet. And they decided deep in their hearts, out of the sincerity and the realness of themselves, to support the work that we are doing in the liberation of our people, waking our people up. So I want to thank those who have donated and showed their support. And I urge them to continue to do so and be consistent with your offerings and with your donations to help us expand our technological capabilities to destroy white supremacy. So I want to take that time out. And, and both, first and foremost, we, I, people say that I talk about everything negative that people are doing in the conscious community. I only focus on the negative and challenge people and call them out. So now I just want to thank somebody and show some positive that somebody has done within the conscious community. I want to thank Brother um, Umar Abdullah Johnson, Brother Umar Johnson, for his support and the resources that he donated to the Black Supremacy Vanguard to help establish our workstation. We appreciate your support, and we appreciate you, Brother, being uh, a walker and not just a talker. You help and aid in those that you know are doing a divine work to liberate and transform the conscience of our people. So I want to thank that, Brother, for that, uh, which may seem oxymoronic <clears throat> and paradoxical due to the nature of the context of the lecture that I'm speaking in tonight, that I happen to be thanking him, and, and I'm, what I'm going into tonight is... Uh, it's no coincidence, but very relevant and very relative. Um, so once again, thank you all for your support. And do continue to help us out. If you want to see more black supremacy, more work, then somebody got to fund it. We always talk about the revolution and changing the condition of our people. But we keep funding Arab stores to stay in business. We keep funding the China man, the Walgreens, the Kmart, and all that. We're going to make sure they stay in business. But we're not going to make sure that our people that are banging on white supremacy have all the resources and everything they need to be successful. That's something we need to go within ourselves and challenge. We need to make sure that we're giving our resources to black supremacy, that we are supporting those that are doing a great work in waking up our people. You can't just say, I support you, I like this video, I'm commenting on this video, and not show any real financial support, labor, mental support, spiritual support, any support that we can give. We need to step up to do so, to aid in the, in the unavoidable and definite success of this black supremacy conscience away. Now, <clears throat> I want to go into my subject matter, which is it's very controversial, but it hasn't been touched on, and it needs to be touched on. We have talked about the feminization of the black man. I hear people going into that. I, I see that that's being touched on by different people. I've, I've, I've heard different lectures and seen different videos by different people that touched on the feminization of the black man. We know what that is. We've heard Dr. Phil Valentine speak on that. Um, we've heard a lot of people go in on that. And I can't, I can't, all their names are not, um, coming to me right off front. But we know that there are people out there that have already spoke on that. But tonight what I'm going to talk about is the over masculinization and the defeminization of not only the black man, but the black woman and the black community. We ain't touched on that. Nobody hit on that. The over masculinization. I'm gonna start off with the, the, the whole issue surrounding the intense homophobia that has been created by the new fashion trends 
that have manifested in our community of how our youth are choosing to wear and wear their clothes and some movements that are actually literally happening in Atlanta and some places around the world. And even Obama, um, with the promises that he's going to pass the, the gay marriage bill and that gays can be married in the United States and that's challenging the Protestant Christian value of America on the Christian, white supremacist Christianity that it stands. Um, this whole thing has created a very severe sense of homophobia in our society. And it's one thing to be against homosexuality on a personal level and to, to choose not to prefer to participate and indulge in those actions, which I myself are, are, are of that group, that choose not to participate um, in those actions and that lifestyle. But it's another thing to hop into this over-masculinization movement that is happening. What is happening there? What's the problem here? Well, the homophobic movement didn't start within the last five years. It has been a, a, a very strong theme within our community. I don't think there's no man on the planet that is more over-masculinized over than the black thug. Or the gangbanger that is in our community. The black male image is an over masculinized image. His whole, the power of himself has always been associated with his physicality. The white women love the black man because of his physicality. Because of the, the, the reproductive and the, the very male aspects of him. Think, um, we're boxers looking at Floyd Mayweather today. We're basketball players. Michael Jordan. All of these very physical and aggressive aspects of ourselves have been heightened in our society. All the rappers are talking about killing each other, gang banging, and going upside another nigga head. This is an issue of over masculinization in our community. And whenever people get on the vibration of love, which is very feminine, which is in man and woman, in our own community, we become very over masculinized. We cannot love one another. We find it easier to be tough with one another, to be gangster with one another. In our own community, we can't find, we can't seem to muster that type of manhood with the white man. But among ourselves, we are tough as hell. We're so afraid, and so the homophobia has been pushed so dramatically that now we always homophobic check it. If you see a black man and have some love for another black man, it could be a very spiritual love, a very deep love, out of the compassion for our people. You say, what, is this man gay or something? So now the act of love and compassion, which are very spiritual virtues that should happen within our community, are being associated with homosexuality. Due to this advanced homophobic movement, if I don't kill you, then I must be gay. This is what's happening in our community. If you bump me in the club and I don't slap the shit out of you, then I must be dead. This is what's happening in our community. This is an intense, intense homophobic movement due to the over masculinization. We can't come together and unify. Because men don't unify and come together and work together to build something. Either you're going to get and build your own independently or be on individualism, or you must be dead. We see the white men coming together, working together, building their own communities as men, working together, having cooperation and agreeability among themselves to get the, to get white supremacy done, to get the enslavement of black people accomplished, to be very effective with police brutality. We see them coming together, organizing them, organizing around this agenda. No problem. Listening to each other, humility, honoring their expertise, getting the task done. Black people come together, black men come together, they gotta prove who they are and how they are the baddest. The over masculinization of the black man has led to this whole new term called the alpha male. See? And the alpha male is a inferiority complex that has deeply rooted within a black man that somehow it's a competitive game amongst man and man, black man and black man. Of who is the alpha male? Who is the top male? That sounds like some homosexuality. Homosexuality too. To be concerned if you are on top of other males. 
to have that even concern. The whole homophobia is reverse homosexuality. I'm not going, that's a whole nother lecture. I'm going to stick to the over-masculinization of the black man. We're so over-masculinized out of our inferiority that lies within ourselves. This whole falseness about manhood, he has become so over-masculinized that we lack the love and compassion for our own community. Within our own community, we don't have love. And unfortunately, we are mad at the homosexuals that, that are within our community for the activities that they participate in. We ostracize them. We sound like the KKK. That we should bash the heads of these faggot men. We sound like fire and brimstone preachers. Even within the conscious community. And we overlook something. That the average black man in our community is not being killed by our homosexuals. The average black man in the community is dying at the hands of another tough black man. That is who's killing us. We are killing one another. We are killing one another more than AIDS. The illusion or myth of AIDS that we know who's really doing the killing. The white man, i.e. the pharmaceutical industry. But that's a whole other life. But we're killing each other even more than the white man. I'm going in. The whole alpha male and being tough among one another makes us the largest murderers of one another. See? We kill more of our own people than Caucasian males that are being killed in war in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Libya, and wherever else they may be all, all put together. We, we kill each other more, especially in the United States of America. We kill more of our own people than black males that died in the Vietnam War. Because we must be tough. We must be tougher than one another. Not working together to realize who our whole enemy is. We have to prove that we're not gay and I'm a man. And usually a man means. Being a man means going upside your own brother's head. But it doesn't mean going upside the Caucasian head. Because we're not so manly when we are incarcerated. When we're incarcerated, we find it easier to go up Upside the people's head that didn't put us in jail. We go upside those who are victims of the penal institution as ourselves. We go upside their head. Everybody else gets off the hook. All the wardens, all the guards, because we have to prove that we're tough among one another, even in the correctional facility. We must prove that we're a man. And we try to prove that we're so much of the man in the, in the correctional facility that that leads to homosexuality. Because now we got to be the man over men, and we end up doing some unmanly things with one another. Am I teaching? So the overmasculization of the black man has to be looked at and dealt with. It makes us not focus on the real who the real enemy is, because the white man is overmasculized himself. This is why all his country is about aggression and war and running in on other people and playing with guns and weapons and can't wait to go up to shoot somebody. In a third world country. See, no love and compassion. No humanitarianism. The white man didn't even know how to love. Until the drug ecstasy came out. He didn't even know what love was. Until LSD and ecstasy came out. For the first time. This mutant and this this grafted beast. Got to experience the artificial feeling of love. While being high. Off narcotics. I'm teaching it that. We have taken on the nature of the white man. But not against the white man. We have taken on the nature of the white man against ourselves. The white man and his over-masculinization and his fear of us sticking our large cocks in the white bitch. A lot of the stuff went wrong during slavery. He showed no compassion for the black man. He hung up the trees. He couldn't stand in there. He was intimidated. He proved his manhood through rituals of cutting our balls off. That's over-masculinization when you cannot feel the feminine compassion for other sentient beings that exist on the planet Earth. 